One of the organisations I once worked for had a sales team who would sell things without reference to our technical team. We had some heads of departments who would promise staff benefits with no reference to human resources. The accounts department would delay payments for goods delivered with no reference to the buying department and the buying department would accept delivery terms with no reference to production. Every department focused on their own agenda and their own outcomes and there was little or no partnership or collaboration with the rest of the organisation. We needed to learn how to do team. We needed to grasp that acrostic T-E-A-M. Together everyone achieves more, more than we can ever do on our own. Because you see, a failure to embrace team working causes organisations to fail. Lack of team working stunts the life and the growth of an organisation. And this includes church life just as much as it does business settings. When the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, he spells out what it looks like to operate as a team. And Bev is going to read us that piece of writing now. I'm taking a reading from 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 31. One body, many parts. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were baptised by one spirit into one body whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of sense smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honourable are treated with special honour, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is part of it. And in the church of God, sorry, and in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are they all apostles? Are they all prophets? Are they all teachers? Do all make miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? do all interpret, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. Thanks, Bev. Paul compares the church to a human body with its different parts which are equipped to perform different functions. Not only in the way he writes does this accentuate the huge number of parts in a human body, but also the great variety in those parts. He reminds us that no matter how many parts of the body we might be able to name, we are still one body. And that's how he wants us to see 
the way the church works because of our shared relationship with Jesus. Before we were Christians, we could do our own thing and we could go our own way. But when we became part of a community with other believers, we entered into a large and a diverse way of living with Jesus at its head. Paul wants us to get the idea of working as team. He wants us to understand that we need each other to be complete. We need one another's wisdoms, ideas and resources and gifting and skills. And when we come together as a team to achieve a common goal, we can expect to see God in life transforming ways, working in our local and in our wider community. And here at TBC, we've tried to capture something of this in our vision statement. We say that we want to be a church of ordinary people, making an extraordinary God known. And then we say, everyone is invited to come as you are, to join in and to be transformed. Our vision statement says that we are a church that wants to know how to do team. Last week in the From the Leadership article, which we send out in our weekly bulletin, I asked for stories about good teams that you've been a part of. And I love this story about TBC some years ago, which Gina is going to share with us. I've been part of many teams, but the most memorable and one of the most effective was being part of the leadership and the building project team at TBC some 13 or 14 years back. This team was the largest and most complex team that I've been part of, as it had many constituent parts with the whole church community actively being involved. We engaged with everyone every step of the way, from the initial planning of the project, the sourcing of alternative sites for activities whilst the work was underway, to the rebuilding itself. There were innumerable meetings of both subgroups dealing with specific aspects of the project, as well as countless whole church member meetings, often at short notice, as members were kept fully involved on all developments and decision making. Everyone seemed totally committed and eager to help in any way they were asked. It was the perfect example of a well-oiled machine working in harmony with all its constituent parts, with no part being more important than another, and every single part regardless of size or task, being respected and appreciated for its contribution. When hitches occurred, such as how to pay for a very significant unexpected cost halfway through the project, they were taken immediately to a church meeting and shared with the members. And via the brainstorming, discussions and prayer at those meetings, God always provided the perfect solution. Even the smallest subjective decisions such as carpet and chair colour were agreed quickly and without petty debate. And we all know how sometimes those sort of decisions can take up a disproportionate amount of time to resolve. I think when people are actively involved with helping resolve the big problems and issues, they then are able to keep the smaller ones in better perspective. Over the couple of the years of the whole project, I would guess that virtually every church member was involved in some way or other, often revealing skill sets not previously recognised or applying skill sets in totally different ways. I think we all became very aware that God was ultimately directing both the church and individuals during this period. And there was a constant overriding sense of grace and humility, not only towards God, but towards each other as everyone worked together. It really was the best of teamwork and being a whole member church. I love that story. Thank you, Gina, for sharing how TBC really pulled together as one community with everyone getting involved. The verses which lead up to the reading which Bev shared with us give us a framework for team working. In verse four, Paul says there are different kind of gifts, but the same spirit. In verse five, he says there are different kind of service, but the same Lord. And in verse six, he says, there are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them. As Paul talks about the different kinds of gifts and service and ways of working, he shows us God as three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
And this is a powerful and a really useful team illustration. God doesn't ask us as church to do anything that he hasn't already done. But as church, as human beings, sometimes we fail to recognise our gifts. Sometimes we aren't given the opportunity to exercise our gifts. And sometimes we fail to deliver that gift in the way that Jesus intends. In verses 15 and 16, Paul raises our self-perception as being a barrier to team working. The foot says, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong. The ear says, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong. And I wonder how many of us might not be able to see where we fit into a team. Maybe we don't see our abilities the way God does. Or possibly we don't see value in the role that we might be able to contribute to church life and a team. Sometimes we need one another to help us to recognise we have something to bring. Last week, Southampton City Library's team filmed some of our Thornhill Community Library volunteers. It was a celebration of how the volunteer community make a contribution to the library services across the city. Speaking about being the library supervisor, Debbie Lohman said this, when I was asked to be the library supervisor, I didn't think I could do it, but I can. And I find that a really powerful statement, don't you? I wonder whether you know someone who doesn't think they can do something, but if invited, they would discover they can. What gifts and what qualities do you see in those that you rub shoulders with that just need encouragement and nurturing into growth? Our self-perception, the way we see ourselves, can be such a barrier to team working. But it doesn't have to be a barrier. Sometimes what we need is somebody who believes in us enough to say, I think you can. So if the way we see ourselves inhibits team working, so can a spirit of self-centeredness in the life of, of the church. Ministries and activities can all too easily revolve around me and what I can do. Maybe we want to be the star performer, or maybe we keep things intentionally small because that's all I can manage or achieve. Maybe we don't appreciate the efforts of others because they threaten us or they're just the things that don't involve us or, or, or our interests. Maybe we're worried that if we delegate tasks to others, they'll make mistakes and that might reflect badly on us, even though mistakes are how we all learn and get better. Paul challenges these attitudes and approaches head on in verse 21. He says, the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. It's a call to ensure that we don't do church life in ways that exclude other people from joining in and becoming part of the team. So if you're involved in any ministry or any activity in TBC, I encourage you to reflect on how you're building team. How are you actively looking to develop team? How are you seeking out your successor when it's time for you to hand on the baton? How does the ministry or activity operate when you're not around? I wonder, are these the kind of questions you're asking? Or are you basically doing your ministry and your activity alone? What tasks do you think that only you can do? Where in effect are you saying, I don't need you. These are really challenging questions, but they're vital ones to address if we're going to be a church that can genuinely and honestly say, come as you are and join in. These have to be answered if we're going to be a church 
which does team. Kirsten was someone else who responded to my question in the weekly news sheet and she said this, I'm grateful to be working in a fantastic small team at my workplace. There are five of us and even though we're working at different levels, at different pay grades and with different levels of responsibility, there's no felt hierarchy. We're all feeling valued and welcome to contribute ideas. We work very much as a team. It's the team output that matters, so we happily pitch in with each other's jobs if needed. And I think there's something very substantial in this approach to team working, when the output matters more than who's doing what. When the output matters more than the recognition we get or our own position in the team, the team works at its best. When the focus is on the end goal and everyone is pitching in to bring that about, an organisation flourishes and it grows. And Paul seems to commend this approach when he talks about the weaker and the less honourable parts of the body. And I like how the Message Bible puts it. The lower the part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's part of your own body you're concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honour, just as it is, without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to full-bodied hair. I love it. But it's making a really powerful point. And Paul needed to do this because the church in Corinth had rival groups based on strong personalities. The church in Corinth that he was writing to had a competitive spirit in its, in its community. Their differences might well have led to lively debates and animated discussions, but ultimately their energies were given over to winning battles with each other rather than winning souls for Christ. The church in Corinth wasn't thriving in, way, in the way that they might have because they hadn't grasped the fundamentals of team. Together, everyone achieves more, more than they could ever do on their own. God's design for his church is like a human body, a wonderfully complex living organism full of vitality and energy. Here at TBC, I believe we have a really strong vision and we have an amazing array of ministries and activities. When all that we do has our vision as its heartbeat, when the whole of our church family finds its place and contribution to that vision, we really will be able to make God known. There are so many opportunities for everyone to use their wisdom, their ideas, their resources, their gifting and the skills if we all buy into this idea of doing team. So if you're involved in church ministries, how are you developing team? Or maybe are you hindering it? And if you aren't involved in any church ministries, what's stopping you joining in? Let's pray together. Father, you call us to be like a human body with every part making a contribution to the health and the well-being of the way that body functions and lives and grows. And God, that's what you're calling us to be a part of as your body of believers, as church. Lord, today we lift you, TBC, each and every person, each and every contribution that everyone can make and each and every ministry 
that gives opportunities for us to come as we are and to join in and to be transformed. So today, if you are involved in an activity, if you're a, a leader of a TBC ministry in your small group, in a midweek activity, serving on a Sunday, I wonder whether I can encourage you to stand or to, to sit with your hands out and before God, ask him to examine your heart and your mind and your actions in the light of team. God, forgive us when we hold on to ministries because we feel insecure. God, forgive us when we hold on to ministries because we just like what it is we're doing. God, forgive us when we don't allow others to be part of our team. And so we release the ministries and the teams that we're a part of. Lord, would you be Lord in our teams? Would you invite newcomers to our teams? Would you invite those that are outside of our team to become part of our team? God, would you help us to understand team? And if you're not involved in a ministry or an activity in TBC, can I invite you to stand or to hold out your hands and surrender who you are and what you have? To surrender your self-perception, the way you see yourself, to God and ask him to show you what valued contribution you could make to the team. So we say, Lord, forgive us when we just don't see our worth. Lord, forgive us when we just can't really be bothered. Lord, forgive us when we prioritise things that have no kingdom value instead of seeing your heartbeat for a lost world. Lord, help us to give what we have, whether it be much or little, riches or not, upfront and exuberant giftings and skills and the quieter skills that just get things done. Lord, help us to value what you've given us and give us the courage to find a way of fitting in. Amen.